Hey there. <clears throat> Hi. All right, all right. Um, yeah, so thanks for jumping in today. Um, basically, I would like to, to have today's calls focus on the, um, basically the final submission notebooks. And I think it will be beneficial to kind of forget about all the other things <laughs> for, for today. And I think just going through um, a list of uh, teams and their submissions is the best way to, to do it. So we have a bunch of stuff going on with uh, polishing the current notebooks. Uh, different teams have different progress on that. Um, but the big thing that is kind of an uncertain is aggregating the results of Geo team and adding it as appendix to three notebooks. So um, Anson and Tyler are helping me with uh, structuring some, something that makes sense in terms of descriptive explanation, what these visualizations mean. They're pretty, pretty awesome, but very, very hard to understand in terms of what, it, what is happening there. And not sure what you, Tyler, think from, from your perspective. Um, yeah, there's, there's a, there's, there's a very, they're very dense and the, and the naming structures are not very friendly yet. There's definitely room for improvement and user friendliness, but, um, in functionality it seems to work for me, the clicking on certain things just comes back with an error right now, but I'm not sure why I figured that's probably just cause I don't have access to all the things. <coughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to, uh, yeah, me and Anson are currently just trying to describe how you use it and what it does and where things are. So we can understand at the same time. Obviously, data viz guys are going to have to go over what we've written because we're kind of working out what from your video discussion earlier on and playing around with it. Yep. Basically, at all. <laughs> what you are writing. Also, I am including some title some some brief explanation on 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 the in, in the visualization on the top on the left so i think that will help yeah well that's what i think we're basically writing what's going to be described or we're going to be we're basically writing a piece right now but it's going to get chopped up and put next to the visualization um demo images and then i'm assuming we're going to be putting links into the live one so people can click through and see the the live yeah, version of it. I think it there is more temporary. benefit to to doing that versus not. Even though it's confusing, there might be some you know aha moments in terms of like what we can actually do, and you know someone may stumble upon it and be like, okay, I can tell them what, exactly what I need in my research. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna probably start some sort of UX research around trying to find some of the medical people and the research, the people with research experience especially anybody who like virologists and stuff and yeah just do some interviews of them literally get them i might actually do some proper actual user research with them and let them use it and talk about what they think and how it works and what they would in like and just get a, an actual user research from it because that way we'll be able to get a better idea of how to improve it on the next iteration of it yeah so that would be amazing again like I can put that in my portfolio because I'm literally trying to do a course in UX right now. <laughs> and just double up. Yeah, sounds perfect. All right, so um, here's what I propose. Um, I think we have a pretty good structure in terms of a case study, how to you know, make the notebook descriptive and not overwhelm the actual medical professionals or anyone that, that is looking at it. Uh, we have uh, a pretty good amount of people here on the call that are not technical at all. So hopefully they will also interrupt us and, and be like, uh, 
what is this and like how how can we make it easier to understand so the big uncovering that we did yesterday is just making sure that our submission notebook is really about our our methodology and what we've done and why we think it it's producing something valuable and showcasing those pieces the, of findings in terms of the the top relevant papers versus showing the code so what we're doing we're separating the code into um, separate notebooks and linking to it from the perspective here's an input here is the black box that notebook that exists somewhere there and here is the output and that gives us kind of the uh, the structure to onboard medical professional and let them not worry about the code but tell us hey your black box doesn't make any sense the inputs don't match the the expected outputs and that's i believe will be the the process of integrating the feedback more efficiently so obviously this the structure will differ from task to task uh, i'm i'm not sure how much of the structure will be relevant to vaccines and treatments team and the transmissions team but yeah i propose to go through it uh, quickly and um, kind of do this exercise to go through what uh, vaccines team and uh, transmission team uh, has. So we're going to start with this one. Uh, just a table of contents, uh, very basic stuff. The first section, introduction, uh, making sure that it's clear who we are and what we're trying to address with this notebook. So notebook uh, address, uh, what do we know about COVID-19 risk factors question. Uh, visit the website, read our story, visit our main notebook for historical context. The second uh, section is task overview. So basically explaining what this question is about, why do we care about it, and what are the you know, basic semantics of, of that task. So just explaining how, <coughs> how, how we are thinking about this as a task. Um, then uh, the most important piece is the summary page, the findings. So this is the, the ideally the part where medical researcher or whoever policymaker uh, comes in and sees um, basically evidence for association of risk factor with COVID-19. This can be different for vaccines and treatments uh, and for the transmission task. But we have um, a list of findings for risk factor, like age, overview. We've identified 77 papers relevant to this risk factor across COVID-19 data set. Here we're presenting top 20 by the number of keyword occurrences. I still think we can do a better job explaining all of this, but in the limited time frame, I think that works. So basically a list of top 20 most relevant papers, uh, risk factor title, uh, keyword used, number of keyword occurrences, and like link to the, the, the paper. Um, then humidity, the same thing. Then um, pollution, same thing. Then temperature, same thing. Uh, then heart disease. So here what's different is the fact of how deep we went into this um, risk factor because of the feedback from medical community that it's uh, the most important one to them. So we not only show the top 20 most relevant papers, um, but we also have a table that shows all papers on heart diseases risks validated using crowdsourced medical input. And we have to do a better job explaining what happened here and probably linking to other parts of this notebook. But this is uh, basically the, the golden list of pieces that medical community and annotators uh, showcase. Okay, so then there is pop population density, same thing, and then we jump into more details. So kind of the first three sections of the notebook is really for people that don't have much time and just want to understand what's happening, what we try to do, and what are the results. Then we jump into um, <coughs> kind of the knowledge base, um, explaining how we approached uh, some things like the group uh, groups of factors 
and just listing out those and explaining what we used to make sure these risk factors are worth pursuing. So we give the example how we queried the current core 19 data set to identify how many papers match those queries and how much of the current data set represents those matches. So again, just some simple heuristics to, uh, that we used to prioritize our work. So the same for diseases, same for environmental factors, same for genetic factors, lifestyle factors, socioeconomic factors. Um, then we're also showing, uh, you know, the kind of the grouping of these things. We're still working on these numbers, but just a high level, which ones are most represented in the uh, data set. The next piece is us defining the workflow and explaining what we've designed as a way to approach this problem. So we get a risk factor categories subdomain, we produce n-gram synonyms, we search for n-grams in papers, we get papers verified by NDs, and then the golden papers identified. Um, probably need a better name for this golden papers, but that's the, the one we got so far. And this is where we explain stages in detail, what the n-gram process uh, is, what is the quality assessment medical annotators, and then we also propose to what degree we can automate this, this part. And we also talk about portability. And the next piece is really case study. So we take one of the risk factors that we've really, really nailed in terms of the depth of research and we showcase exactly what we've done step by step uh, using our approach. And here we showcase inputs medical subdomain heart disease in ICD code heart disease is in category and section 542 the output is the list of n-grams that correspond to heart diseases so again this kind of black box approach here's the input here's the output and this is the link to the actual code unfortunately the code was bigger than what Kaggle supports so we had to place it on uh, Google uh, Colab and I think it doesn't matter for this specific uh, purpose. It's, it's really like whatever suits us to the results. The part two, same structure, input, output, link to code, medical input, uh, input, output, probably need a link here on soon for the output of our human black box. Because um, it, it's also black box and we have some something that, that works as, as a machine, just a human machine. Um, then part four is a snapshot of output, basically the final result of this workflow. Um, so, and here are some key phrases that demonstrate the effectiveness of our output, just like showing people why we think this approach works. We need probably a little bit of wording and explanation to this, but this is a good start. Um, then we have the list of um, our notebooks. So basically one place that combines all of the code base stuff and we're still working on that. And a very important part called why we did what we did. And basically a very simple explanation for each stage and how we came up with the stage itself and the heuristics that we used to kind of make sense of this task. Uh, this is the part that we should improve today. So the next goal, June deadline, uh, also giving a, a picture for what's next. Then daily calls, just a list of all daily calls that we've recorded in case anyone is curious to, to understand how we reached certain conclusions. And then there is appendix. So this is where the geo visualizations go and the explanation that Tyler and Anson are working on. So basically just adding stuff that is visual and is able to add an extra power to, to the notebook. And of course, credits. So each team should ideally have um, a, a document that outlines all the people that contributed to this task in whatever form they did, even if they uh, you know, sent an email or whatever. Like all of these people uh, should receive credit and it's hard to quantify who did what, but you know it's it's super important. So this is this is the last uh, part of, of the notebook. 
Okay. We are missing one one member there. Mandel Kosi is not there. <laughs> okay, just just message me or add on that document directly. So this is kind of the, the structure that we have for risk factors so far. Obviously far from final, but I would love to go uh, through team by team and basically go through, uh, I mean, just two teams at this point, which is vaccines and transmission. So maybe start with the vaccines, um, Dan and Ben. Hi, uh, I think Dan is on simultaneous Zoom. So let me take uh, the screen and show you. Uh, uh, how uh, yeah, Ben can share a screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, this notebook is uh, like uh, in the process of running its final version, but it's ready. And Dan and I are planning to submit it uh, in an hour, basically from now. So we have a nice Fancy. header. Here you go. Uh, you beat yeah, me in um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Th this is chloroquine and uh, remdesivir for anyone Very who wants nice to know. What I like it. On. Yeah, remdesivir um, seems to be popped up a lot on the list. Yeah, yeah, these are two two popular ones. But okay, so um, we've got the preamble, which is pretty much based on what Arto had in the other notebook. Change phrasing, just. Am I the only one who lost Ben? Nope. No, oh, no, no. I was just like, did my computer just die? <laughs> <laughs> ben, I think we couldn't handle the, the amazingness of your header. <laughs> the header was just too good. It broke, just it message him. broke the internet and Zoom. Can you hear me now? Yeah. You know, me, sorry, I don't know what happened there. Let me bring back, bring it back. Um, so I was talking through the um, executive summary. So um, I, I was just saying that um, we wanted it to be very clear what the deliverables are here. And so uh, first line in the executive summary says, these two things are our deliverables. Um, so there's the two Power BIs. Uh, there's the matrix, uh, the, the drug explorer. And take a second to load. So we uh, went through a few rounds of feedback, took on people's presentation suggestions here. Um, so you can uh, see these are the drugs that were found matched to COVID-19 somewhere in the paper. You can drill down uh, into one drug, see what's been said about it. So, you know, the viral load in patients has decreased before remdesivir is injected and so on. And you can see the context this mention of the drug comes up in. Uh, you can look in title, abstract, or everywhere in the paper. Um, and if you want to, you can look at ones in the core data set that are not actually connected to COVID. If you want to look at connection to any coronaviruses, which is basically what the core data set includes. And then obviously you get a much bigger set of drugs. By the way, quick yes. note, I think yeah. the other coronavirus is confusing. Any is a better word. Okay. Uh, I suspect it's going to be this because this is what we're submitting in an hour. But I think uh, it's okay. Hopefully it's okay for, <laughs> okay. for, anyway, so the final feature here is match quality. So loose is based on just simple uh, co-occurrence. Medium is co-occurrence after negation detection. And then tight is based on an ML model that's been trained to find uh, relation extractions. Um, the numbers of papers that pass don't change enormously depending on which tightness level you pick. Um, so you see a few in the left histogram are changing, uh, coming and going as you tighten the match criteria. Uh, we default to medium as the match strength. So that's one of the visuals. The other visual is a matrix. So this visual uh, categorizes statements that have been made about each drug, uh, depending on whether they were made in the context of a clinical study, an in silico study, a preclinical study. Um, and there should be another category here, which I will make sure gets fixed uh, before we submit this. Um, so how did you get in there? I've never seen this. This is also linked on the notebook. Oh, okay. That's the second Power BI, right? Yeah, this is a second Power BI. So this is now categorizing by study type. So we can look at all the clinical studies of ribavirin, for example. You know what would be great? Uh, making yeah. a screenshot as an image link in the notebook yeah. as those two. 
Oh, uh, we have that in the notebook actually, as a matter of fact. So the, here's the, this here, there's a section on methodology and then they're embedded here in the notebook as well. Yeah, if, so, you, can, if you can make a screenshot image link so that people that uh, go through the notebook from the very beginning just immediately see that and click because- uh, Up here, up here you mean. Uh, at the top, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 that's fine. So, so then we have a section that describes the methodology. We've tried to keep it not too like geeky, you know, like it's not too jargony. It's something that somebody from policy might be able to understand what we did. Um, and then the code executes all below. So we, we've tried to stick to a flat notebook structure, nothing in external GitHubs really, everything executes in line in the notebook to make these things. Um, and then finally at the bottom, we list the, the contributors um, alphabetically with a sort of brief statement of what each person did in the notebook. So uh, this is basically done. I will investigate that one missing column in Matrix, but the plan is to submit this in uh, basically an hour because of other commitments Dan and I have then up until the deadline. Sounds great. Very well done. Really amazing. Really, really well done. Yeah. The, the, the cheering up, the celebration. <laughs> we were missing the <laughs> YouTube uh, exactly. It was an amazing group effort. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was a great team. Yeah, we, we need to, to improve on, on those like uh, social distancing celebration things. But yeah, it's, it's amazing work. Just to see that come up from nothing, uh, it's, it's beautiful. All right. So we'll have a virtual happy hour celebration later. <laughs> yep. Something. yep that's happening for sure all right so and you guys um okay so you don't have time obviously to add any geo stuff and other stuff uh can uh can the you geo stuff might be able to be wrapped up in a separate notebook that points to this notebook as far yeah. as where the data is coming from i think that's probably doable yeah so maybe you leave the appendix section and uh, give someone the access to edit it. You can add me and I can use that appendix section basically to link out to different things. Within the existing VT notebook or like yeah. a new notebook? Okay, I'm just worried about like merge conflicts and all that, especially as we get down to the deadline. But maybe Ben can speak better to that. Yeah, I, I think if we're gonna include any uh, geo stuff, we should make a separate notebook. And uh, yeah, uh, okay. I, I think we shouldn't mess with this. It's, it's yeah. taken a long time to get this like, you know, <laughs> finely yeah, tuned, I, I would say. Okay, makes sense, I agree. <laughs> right. well, with proper yeah. references to other notebooks and everything, I think that should be totally fine. It's just a separate notebook. Yep, and then we need the visualization of all the connections of notebooks to each other. <laughs> and then we're good. <laughs> yeah, all right, so, I'm sure of notebooks. Yeah. <laughs> If nothing else, Kaggle's going to realize that the limitations of what they currently run on, we decided to push it to the point of it. To, we just ran it to its limit and found out that we, it's not big enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Christine, uh, transmissions team, you want to share your, your screen? Um, yeah, sure. We're a little behind than you guys, but we're, we still have a lot of work to do. I will tell you what we have right now. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep. So yeah, we also have like a similar structure without like so, such amazing <laughs> header, but that's something we can probably steal the idea from. But anyway, we have like a structure of outline of our stuff and then we're filling in um, each section. And then we have like a visualization approach a little more explanation of it. It's very straightforward. Um, and then, yeah, we are currently working on putting our results on there. We have some visualizations of what we find, essentially, but I don't think it's a good, probably not a good idea to put a code here. Um, yeah, and then we also did some um, exploratory analysis uh, with the, the additional attributes that we extract from the paper, including like age. So we have, we can look at um, what's the age distribution of study participants. And then this is by different query. If they study only mostly one population than the other. Um, 
and this this is um incubation period extracted Quick from question. the data. Uh, I'll, I'll interrupt right. you real quick. So you guys build uh, basically a tool to extract the values out of the clinical trials? No clinical trial, just old from old papers. Oh, We're just old looking papers. into like different sections of the paper to look for okay. relevant information. Well, this yeah. sounds exciting. Uh, do you want to to get uh, uh, on a call after this and ideate how we can uh, keep this one as a technical one, but then create a more like uh, explainable, uh, approachable one uh, for people that are not technical? Yeah, for sure. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, for now, it's just uh, we're yeah, still just figuring ahead. out how this, to present. This is great. Uh, I know. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what we have so far, and then we still need to um, highlight. The articles that we found, like uh, you did for the risk factor, um, I think then we will be in a good shape for submission. Yeah, it's just, yeah, a little messy, sorry. And yeah, this is try attempt to look at different uh, distribution of the incubation period with the children and adult data. Um, yeah, still has, has a lot of work to do. Okay, so to uh, let, let's summarize. Uh, you have a, a tool that is able to extract uh, quantitative data such as age, uh, incubation periods, some related stuff to your task, right? And we can right. probably showcase that as visualizations as you did, and also showcase a, a list of relevant papers that right. give you that data, right? Right. Exactly. Okay, so let's focus today on delivering those two pieces, and um, you're in the same time zone with me, so I'll I'll jump on the call with you. We'll probably have Tyler and Anson helping us later today after they finish with the geo stuff, and yeah, uh, sounds exciting. Cool, thanks. Well done. All right, the the next so yeah, celebration awesome. cheering. How do you guys do that applause thing here? Uh, there's an, on reactions at the bottom. There's a little thumbs up and there's a little clap. Oh. And the clap gives you the, everyone can do yes. a little virtual clap it's, now. It's missing the the sound, you know. It, yeah, it's it's missing the sound, but that would probably lag the crap out of it if everyone did it and we all heard sound. It, it all fall over, and uh, yeah, it's fine. It's it's a nice little cue. Yeah, we just need to work out how to import our little parrot. And then we're fine. <laughs> Party parrot. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that thing is definitely missing the, the jingle, you know? <laughs> we can add music to that. That's it. Uh, we can use that Cardi B uh, tune. So, I, okay. Um, all right. So, Everything sounds great. Uh, VT team is submitting. Uh, oh, let's, um, let's make sure risk factors is submitting in the next couple of hours too. And let's make sure we can get the submission of transmission team in the next six hours, right? H how much more time we have? Uh, need to see. Probably eight, seven. I don't know. I've lost track. It's sometime in the early morning. PM. It's sometime in the early morning for me. So yeah. Okay. We have nine, six nine and hours. hours. We have six hours. Okay. So let's aim on hitting three or four hours, Christine. Okay. Just in, just in case. All right. Sounds good, guys. Um, other than that, again, amazing job, everyone. It, the last 24 hours were chaos and like complete madness, but we're, we're producing something amazing. Like it's, it's crazy. I did the first draft, but I think it's coming along really well, guys. So yeah, it's just going to be really interesting once we, once, once we all have a little bit of a breath and we can start refining the work rather than this big push to document it because no one likes documenting the work. Let's, let's be fair. No one has fun with documentation. It's the doing we all like, not the writing down why and how. It's not interesting, but we have to do it. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. All right. Thanks guys. And yeah. All right. Bye. <laughs> Thanks.